Have you ever wondered if you could tweak your personality traits like adjusting the settings on your phone? Less anxious, more outgoing, super organized? Sounds like sci-fi, right? But today, we're diving into real science, not fantasy, to explore whether gene editing technology like CRISPR could one day help us understand the biological roots of who we are. This isn't about creating designer people, it's about how science is uncovering the genetic layers of personality, emotions, and mental health in a responsible way. Let's explore the possibilities, the limitations, and, most importantly, the facts. Can we really edit our personality with CRISPR gene editing? This revolutionary technology has been making waves in the scientific community, but what are the implications of using it to alter our very selves? From extroversion to introversion, and from anxiety to confidence, the possibilities seem endless. But what are the risks and ethics involved in tampering with our genetic code? In this video, we'll dive into the world of CRISPR and explore the possibilities and limitations of editing our personality. Is this the future of self-improvement or a slippery slope into uncharted territory? Tune in to find out. CRISPR is a precise gene editing tool that allows scientists to target and modify specific parts of our DNA. It's a game changer in many areas of biology and in neuroscience, it's already being used to study how certain genes influence brain development and emotional regulation. For example, Researchers at the University of Aberdeen removed the BE5.1 enhancer, which affects the BDNF gene, a key factor in anxiety response. When removed in mice, females showed higher anxiety, suggesting that non-coding regions of DNA play a major role in behavior. But make no mistake, this does not mean we're changing personalities. Scientists are using CRISPR to better understand how certain genes may influence neural activity and emotions, not to rewrite our identity. This research is essential in understanding the biological underpinnings of mental health, but we're still far from being able to alter specific personality traits, like someone flicking a switch. Personality is much more than a simple set of genetic instructions. While certain traits like empathy, leadership, or introversion can be influenced by genes, they aren't determined by just one gene. Instead, they are shaped by a complex interaction of multiple genes and life experiences. It's a combination of our genetic blueprint and the experiences we encounter that define who we are. For example, some of the genes associated with behavioral tendencies include MAOA, linked to impulse control and emotional regulation, influencing how we react to stress. DRD4, associated with novelty-seeking behavior, making us more likely to seek out new experiences. 5-HTTLPR, a gene related to emotional sensitivity and serotonin uptake, impacting how we process emotions. COMT, influences dopamine metabolism and decision-making, affecting how we make choices under stress. But here's the catch. Environment matters too. Even someone with a genetic predisposition for anxiety might grow up calm and confident in a nurturing environment. So what is CRISPR actually doing in psychology and psychiatry? Right now, it's a powerful tool for understanding and treating genetic disorders, not to edit emotions or design personalities. For example, the gene DISC1 is being studied for its role in schizophrenia, helping us understand the genetic basis of this mental health disorder. CACNA1C is linked to mood disorders and brain signaling, making it a target for therapeutic interventions. FKBP5 plays a significant role in stress response and PTSD, and CRISPR is helping scientists develop animal models to test new treatments for trauma. By using CRISPR to alter genes in controlled settings, researchers are making strides in developing therapies for genetic conditions. But this is about advancing treatments, not altering who we are on a fundamental level. You might see flashy headlines about editing emotions, but let's be clear, there are no approved medical uses of CRISPR for personality modification. Editing human embryos to change behavior is not only technically unfeasible, it's ethically prohibited in most parts of the world. 
Even somatic cell editing, which is used in therapeutic contexts, comes with deep ethical considerations. These include access and fairness. Who gets to decide who changes their genetic code? Long-term effects. What might we be missing in the long run? Psychological expectations. How will people feel if they know their traits are edited or modified? These aren't just scientific dilemmas. They are real-world challenges that we need to consider carefully. Editing emotions or personality traits through CRISPR may sound appealing, but it raises significant moral and ethical issues that we must take into account before moving forward. So, what does the future hold? The real revolution might not be about controlling or editing our emotions, but about understanding the biological and genetic factors that influence our behavior. The future of CRISPR might involve identifying genetic risk markers for mental health conditions early on, allowing for preventative care before symptoms appear, developing personalized treatments that work better, faster, and safer by tailoring mental health interventions to an individual's genetic makeup, understanding the biology of behavior without attempting to control or change it. The goal isn't to engineer emotions, it's to support mental health through better science. Rather than attempting to edit personalities, CRISPR's potential lies in supporting mental health care in ways that we've never been able to before. Understanding the genetic foundations of conditions like depression, anxiety, and PTSD can help us create more effective therapies, potentially preventing these conditions from even developing. While we've focused on the science and ethics of CRISPR, let's take a step back and think about the potential societal impact. If CRISPR were to be widely applied to mental health research, what could that mean for individuals, families, and communities around the world? One of the most promising aspects of CRISPR in mental health is its ability to personalize treatment. Right now, mental health treatment is often a one-size-fits-all approach. Therapy and medication can be effective, but they aren't universally successful for everyone, and it can take years to find the right combination. But this is only the beginning. CRISPR has the potential to give us deeper insights into how genetic predispositions influence mental health. Understanding how certain genes influence behaviors like anxiety, depression, or risk-taking could lead to preventative strategies. Strategies that could stop mental health disorders before they even begin. Imagine the possibility of predictive genetic testing, which allows us to identify individuals who may be at a higher genetic risk for developing conditions like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or severe anxiety. However, this is where we must tread carefully. With this power comes responsibility. As we explore the genetic basis of mental health, it's crucial that we maintain a balance between scientific curiosity and respect for individual rights. Genetic data is incredibly personal. While CRISPR could offer immense benefits, there are also privacy concerns that need to be addressed. Could employers, insurance companies, or even schools have access to an individual's genetic information? How do we ensure that people aren't discriminated against because of their genetic makeup? The more we learn about genetics and mental health, the more important it becomes to protect individuals from potential misuse of this information. Today, we explored what CRISPR is, and what it isn't. While it's exciting to think about gene editing and emotion, the truth is far more grounded. CRISPR offers powerful insights into how genes affect mental health, but personality is the result of biology, psychology, and life experience combined. It's a tool for healing, not for shaping identities. CRISPR's role in mental health will help us better understand and treat disorders, not edit our emotions or personalities. The future of CRISPR lies in helping us personalize treatments and understanding the biology of our behavior, not in attempting to alter who we are at the core. We are still a long way from using this tool to change fundamental aspects of our personality. So, what do you think? Would you want to know your genetic tendencies for personality? Do you believe science should play a role in understanding how we behave? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about science, genes, and the mind, hit subscribe and check out our next video. Can AI detect your emotions better than a human therapist? Thanks for watching.